Good morning. I'm Dr. Bilagi, and uh, I'm from Birmingham Women's Hospital. Thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to present my research. So I'll be talking on uh, can first trimester serum PAPE predict fetal growth retardation. We have attempted to do a systematic review and a meta-analysis on this topic. Sorry. So uh, I'll be quickly going through some definitions uh, because there seem to be some differences in the definition and the terms we've used in this presentation and our research. FGR is a term which is used to define a fetus which has failed to uh, attain its uh, true growth potential. And SGA is a term which is small for gestational age, is a population-based definition which is based on birth weight and this could be a customized number. FGR can uh, be caused by different reasons. It could be uh, due to maternal cause, fetal cause or uh, placental causes. Uh, I'll just quote some uh, recent studies done and which probably would tell us about the magnitude of the problem. Agadosi et al. at the Confidential Enquiry Report in 2005 quoted that maybe the 85% of unexplained stillbirths could be due to FGR if we use his recommended modified classification in FGR. Uh, two more studies uh, quote that low birth weight infants are more likely to die within the first year of life or they suffer from uh, neonatal problems like hypothermia, hypoglycemia, or neurodevelopmental delays. Barker et al. and his study in 2002 reported that it well, may well could be a fatal origin of adult disease. Uh, currently, uh, in our clinical practice, uh, antenatal identification of SGA or FGR is quite poor, and uh, unfortunately, we haven't got many effective preventative measures or treatment options, even when the condition is established. Probably the reason is uh, we try to do things too late. We try to correct things probably in second trimester when the placental problems already set in. Mainstay of management uh, does is just surveillance and timing of delivery. Uh, the interest in Pepe Spur in 2013, when RCOG came up with its new green top guideline on the management of uh, small for gestational age fetuses. And uh, in the guideline, in the first page itself on the guideline, it came up with uh, high risk factors and it mentioned Pepe in its uh, main risk factors. It suggested PAPE, less than 0.4, multitudes of median or fifth centile should be considered as, as major risk factor. And this was based on Spencer et al., uh, uh, which was a large cohort study done in 2009, and a systematic review done by Morris et al. in 2008, which showed significant association of PAPE and the small for gestational or FGR babies. A uh, brief touch on PAPE. PAPE is an insulin-like growth factor binding protein, protease, uh, with a specificity for IGF-BP2. Now, as we discussed, FGR is uh, characterized by the impaired prophoblastic invasion of the maternal spiral arteries and the conversion from the narrow muscular vessels to wide non-muscular channels, which will aid more blood flow to the fetal site. Now, reduced level of PAPE may result in this increased number of uh, IGF bond to their uh, carrier proteins, thus reduced availability of these factors on the fetal growth and on the tropoblastic invasion of the decidua. So, with this study, we attempted to determine the predictive accuracy of first trimester maternal serum PAPE levels, and it's a importance in identifying fetal growth retardation in the current literature. I'll briefly touch upon uh, the uh, way this test accuracy study is done because this systematic review is a test accuracy study. Like any study, we need a population. From the population, we take our study samples depending on the characterized involved. Here, 
in our study, the test sample were where the women who were pregnant in the first trimester with the singleton pregnancies. The index test was serum PAPE. Uh, this test is routinely offered to all women uh, as part of their uh, Down syndrome risk assessment. Depending on the test, uh, depending on the PAPE levels, we've, these women are classified as test positive or test negative. Furthermore, we apply the gold standard, which is a diagnosis based on a suitable reference standard. Uh, in our case, it was the birth weight of the baby. Once we applied these two uh, tests, uh, we divide our patients or subjects into four groups. We call them as uh, true positives if they have a, a tested positive, both for the test and the standards. They're assigned as false negative if they have tested positive for the test and they further on do not develop the disease. They are assigned as false negative if they test negative and if they further go on and develop the disease. And the last remaining group would be test negative. So applying these uh, steps, I'll just quickly go through the methodology in my systematic review. So step one was framing the questions uh, where the population we chose were all pregnant women with singleton pregnancies in the first trimester. The index test was a PAPE in the first trimester. Reference standard or uh, the outcome parameter we looked into was a measure of birth weight. We included all studies, uh, all observational studies uh, with more than 10 participants where a two into two table of accuracy could be obtained. Uh, further on, after this, we moved on and uh, using this question, we looked into multiple uh, uh, search engines, Medline, Embase, Sinal. We also included gray literature right from the inception till September 2014. After collecting this literature, we ran on uh, the test for quality of literature. We used QuadAS2 and START checklist to uh, uh, assign the quality of these uh, studies, including the way they've selected the population, the way they did the test, and the way the outcomes were measured. After collecting this data, we summarized the evidence uh, using forest plots and bivariate meta-analysis. Once we've got this uh, data, we try to implement it and uh, s see whether our statistical analysis could be trusted and the implications on clinical practice and any implications on future research because of this new data. So uh, going in details with the search results, we identified about 810 citations with our first search. We filtered these to 646 by looking into the titles and abstracts. We uh, chose or we collected 164 papers for more detailed evaluations. Uh, we identified three more papers from the reference list from the above 164 papers. We ruled out uh, about 130 papers depending on uh, many variables we looked into uh, the most common one was uh, the most common reason was uh, not able to achieve a two by two table, which excluded about 64 papers. Uh, there were 48 duplicates of the papers which were excluded. So finally, we included about 33 papers for our review. Once we got this, uh, once we collected and chose the papers, the results were pooled among groups of studies with similar characteristics, the same threshold for the PAPE same reference standard threshold for FGR or SGA at the same trimester of testing. From the two by two tables, the following were calculated with the 95% confidence intervals for individual studies. So we chose sensitivity, which is a true positive rate, and specificity, which is a true negative rate. So the first group was uh, patients who had a uh, Pape less than 10 centile, and the birth weight was less than 10 centile. We included 12 studies with subject pooling of 49,603. Uh, we got in this group, we got a sensitivity of 18% and a specificity of 90%. 
In the second group, we had patients who had a PAPE of less than 5th centile and a birth weight less than 10 centile. We included 12 studies in this pool and the subject pool was about 61,368. The results again were very similar to the first group with a low sensitivity of about 11% but with a high specificity of 95%. The next group of uh, subjects were uh, page of subjects who had PAPE less than 5th centile and birth weight less than 5th centile. We had nine studies included in this group and a total subject pool was 66,406. The results again came up strikingly similarly with a sensitivity of 12% and a specificity of 95%. The last group uh, who had PAPE less than 10th centile and a birth weight less than 5th centile. We had nine studies uh, which with a pooled subject of 43,504. Results very similar to other groups with a low sensitivity of 22% and a reasonably uh, acceptable specificity of 89%. The best uh, results we got were from the group of PAPE, less than 5th centile, and birth weight, less than 5th centile. We tried to uh, do some calculations or implication of this result, uh, taking uh, the information from the Green Top Guidelines. So with this group, we get an odds ratio of about 2.78 with 95% uh, class interval. Uh, now, the only treatment recommended is aspirin according to the green top guidelines. The guidelines say that relative risk of uh, SGA is 0.47 if it's commenced in first trimester for women who also has a risk of PET. With this, uh, the number needed to test would be 629 and number needed to treat would be 16. If we take it as a general blanket rule for all women, who has a relative risk of SGA of 0.9 with a 95% confidence interval. Number needed to test would be 3,333 and number needed to treat would be 83. Now applying this results locally to a hospital, at Birmingham Women's, 65% women accept the Downs, the Downs risk testing. Thus, if we offer the screening for all women, we would test 2,870 2, women extra every year. And we know that this uh, test costs five pounds for each uh, subject. This would equate to about 15,000 pounds to test, not to mention extra costs involved in the scans. So looking into these, uh, looking at all these aspects, we conclude that though our study was methodologically robust to review, we admit inadequate reporting because of the terminologies coined in the research and in paucity of getting papers with uh, terminology on FGR, which I think is more important, which has more wider clinical implications than SGA babies. So far in our group, PAPE, uh, subjects with PAPE less than 5th centile are for SGA less than 5th centile uh, gave us the best result. Though the specificity was high in this group, sensitivity was low to be accepted this as a screening test. To apply this clinically, we need to uh, have a view on economic and patient costs. So this probably would give way for some future research on this topic. Sorry. Uh, we need to choose some better reference standards uh, in terms of coining the terms. Preterm FGR is uh, most likely due to placental insufficiency and maybe PAPE can be more relevant in that subcategory of group. Combination of tests is another way forward where we can use PAPE with another indicator like uh, uterine artery Doppler or serum beta SCG uh, to give us better diagnostic results. And further on, we could uh, do well with a meta-analysis based on individual patient uh, domain. I acknowledge Ms. Katie Morris and Prof. Kilby in all his support, not to forget BMOX to give me this opportunity to present my work. Thank you.